Hi, I'm Keisha Arsenault, and I'm here to talk to you about the EdTech Learning Pathways and some strategies you might use when you're developing your plan or path to success. I'm here at the EBR uh, Schools EdTech.org website. I've gone to Learning Pathways and to Supporting Documents. And here on the Supporting Documents page, you'll find documents about where to start, Individualized Pathways, and EdTech Professional Learning Pathways Matrix. I'm going to visit the Matrix because it puts everything in one easy to read space and it'll be easy to talk to you guys about potential strategies to use when developing your personalized plan. So let's say that I'm a teacher and I know that I should be working on my technology readiness, digital citizenship, and technology integration pathways. And let's say that I scored an approaching basic, which puts me about in the middle of the game. I can see here that there are several courses within each area that I need to complete. However, let's say that when I look at technology integration, I look at these overview courses and I feel comfortable with technology integration, but these overview courses, there may be like one of these that I haven't done before. Like maybe I haven't taken the introduction to digital literacy course right here. If I look over on the left, Overview courses are required for all, so no matter what level I'm at, whether you're introductory or advanced, you have to take these overview courses. So first of all, I know I'm going to need to add this introduction to digital literacy to my plan. Even if I've done everything else um, within the overview courses, if I haven't done this one, that's going to have to be a part of my plan. Then if I look down here and I say, okay, it says complete two additional technology integration tool courses. And I say to myself, you know what, last year I completed one technology integration course and then over the summer I completed a second one. So really I've already started on this pathway, which would mean I'd only need to do one additional more to complete my approaching basic for that level. However, if I come over to digital citizenship and I haven't taken the first course on digital citizenship at all, I may want to back up a little bit and do this first one before I start these two. If I get to technology readiness though, and I've done all of these with an introductory, I've done all of these with an approaching basic, I could actually go ahead and get started on basic, or I could say, you know what, I've already done everything I need to do for technology readiness for now. I'm going to spend my time focusing on catching up in digital citizenship and technology integration. And when I get caught up, then I will start working on technology readiness as well. Keep in mind, though, studies do show that teachers need to spend at least 30 hours in professional development a year in order to effectively integrate technology. So when you're developing your professional growth plan, you should keep that in mind that about 30 hours a year or more is an appropriate um, measure of time. Now everybody's going to be a little bit different. If we have a brand new teacher or somebody who's totally new to technology versus somebody who is a guru at technology, your pacing may be different, which is why it should truly be an individualized plan. But just make sure that you're truly um, pushing yourself at your level.